So, you've got a couple of murder hobos at your table. But what does that even mean? It's a term that gets thrown around a lot these days to describe players who attack every NPC and creature in sight. And for some tables, that behavior might be totally fine. But what if I told you that behavior isn't always their fault? In fact, it might very well be your fault. Now, it's true a lot of new players like to press the boundaries of a game, testing what they can get away with and seeing how fun it would be to live in a world without real consequence. It's actually a pretty natural sort of social experiment when a player engages in an RPG for the first time. But if the behavior becomes commonplace at your table, that may be a sign of a larger issue. Greetings goblins, and welcome back to Elder Goblin Games. Today we're going to discuss player behaviors, rewards, and punishments. And if you want plus one proficiency in all things tabletop gaming, don't forget to trip that like button, attack that subscribe, and grapple that bell to maximize your XP, and keep this goblin from making death saves. The Carrot and the Stick There's an old story about a farmer, a stubborn donkey, and a stick that I could tell here, but the gist of it is that the behavior the farmer wanted from the donkey wasn't achievable through punishment. In fact, it only made things worse. Then one day he decided to dangle a carrot in front of the donkey to get him to work. But the real caveat here is that when the work was done, the farmer would reward the donkey with that carrot. If your player is a donkey, then a reward nearly always works better than punishment. That isn't to say never use the stick. Consequence is still a very important part of any game. But oftentimes that undesirable, murder-hobo-esque behavior stems from a lack of any other motivation or the presence of the wrong motivations. If you reward your players with experience, points, gold, and items every time they kill any random thing that moves, they're going to keep killing random things. But if you give them XP and cool items for being curious, exploring alternative options, and trying negotiations or clever strategies every now and then, chances are they're more likely to try that again in the future. Now I can hear some of you already priming your keyboards to say, sometimes you just want to fight and kill things. And sure, that's fine if that's the kind of hack and slash action game you're going for. But even a lot of old school games are about leveraging a situation until you have the advantage rather than rushing in the front door for every encounter. In many of these older style games, if you didn't choose your fights, or at least the angle from which you approach them, you'll often end up dead. That's the stick. But if you get to surprise the troll by dropping a huge boulder on his head and dealing massive damage to kick things off, that's more interesting. That's a carrot. Now there are some GMs who I would call misers, who refuse to give their party and their characters any sort of reward for clever ideas or for when they circumvent a problem with an inventive solution. And for the love of the gods, the old and the new, please don't be a miser. RPGs are one of the only mediums we have where we can be truly creative in our solutions. The only limitations to the game are you, the GM. So why not say yes if it's plausible, or even if it's just really cool, or just leave it up to fate and make them roll for it? What's the harm in letting your players try if they are excited about something and it isn't going to break the game, which it rarely does? Also, I say go overboard with your rewards. When they do easily stomp that troll with a boulder, let them find the hidden cache of weapons it's hoarded from all the other slain adventurers. Don't be a miser and say, ah well, you crushed all of his weapons when you crushed him with that boulder. Think about the way you reward your characters and what it's going to encourage in the future. Now, I'll admit, I've turned murder hobo in a game or two because my GM stymied any idea I came up with, to the point where I thought, Man, Skyrim is more flexible than this dude. Why didn't I just stay home and play that instead? And so I just started fighting things, because that was more interesting than living out the very narrow story I was clearly being puppeteered through. So if your players are murder hobos, ask yourself, why? And maybe try one of these things. Try a new game out that isn't only combat centric. Bend the rules of what a spell, ability, or item can accomplish. Say yes more often than no. Give out rewards and boons often for creative and interesting ideas. Don't cling too tightly to the way you think things should go. I think you'll be surprised at the results. 
Remember that donkey I talked about at the beginning of the video? It wasn't just about dangling the carrot in front of its face all day. The key was when he fed the donkey that carrot for its hard-earned effort. Sometimes you need to be able to see what you're fighting for in order to go after it. So dangle those carrots and give them out as often as it makes sense, or whatever other shiny tantalizing rewards it takes, and direct your players in a direction other than murder. Thanks for watching, and remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. I have scoured to the heart of the archives deep and traveled to the top of the cinder cloud peaks and forded the ever plains for the answers I see. So beware of the realms where you meddle, for the fates can be fickle when the dice settles.